Hello and welcome in another video. Remember when I showed you those guys? Well, this is how they look like today. The same fish with the same mother. Or how about those little platys? They are also doing great and growing really fast. So what's the secret of this perfect health and fast growth? Well, it's not really a secret, it's just good food. Today I will show you how I feed my fry and how do I culture live foods for my smallest fish. First of all, strong statement. You cannot beat live foods when it comes to fry. Or adult fish to be exact. Don't be afraid of it, it's really easy to make and I will show you every step on how to do it yourself. When it comes to fry, I basically use two options, infusoria and baby brine shrimp. There are other options, but in my opinion those are the easiest ones and pretty much everybody can do it. So let's start from infusoria. They are the best food for very small fry. I mean the fry that is not able to eat baby brine shrimp. They are invisible to the naked eye and you can barely see them if you're using magnifying glass. I used infusoria many times in the past. For rams that are very good in the very first days when the fry is very tiny, but also for betas, many species of tetras and so on. So there are three basic methods of rising infusoria, but all of them start the same. First of all, you're gonna need a container when you're gonna rise your infusoria. Next step is fill it with water, but here very important, you have to use water from established tank. And I mean the tank that is running for months, not something that you set up yesterday. And now you have those three choices I mentioned. First, you can use some kind of a vegetable and let it rot in this water. So, what is happening in that scenario? The vegetable that you are putting inside is starting to rot. When it rots, there are bacteria on top of it. And this bacteria will become a food source for the infusoria that was already in the water from your tank. And this method is the slowest one at least in my opinion and from my observation. You're gonna need at least few days before the infusoria multiplies enough that it's usable as a food source for your fry. Next method involves your sponge filter. You can squeeze a little bit of dirty water from this filter into our container. This introduces a lot of infusoria culture into the mix. And next, add some yeast into this combination and this time that yeast will act as a food source for infusoria. This method is more effective than the previous one and you should get some infusoria within let's say 36 hours. And third method is using this kind of product. This is Protogen from a company called Hobby and what it is is basically dried out infusoria with a little bit of spirulina added to it. I got it on Amazon and have it just in case if I need infusoria very quickly. So again, what you have to do is take a small piece and just throw it into the container I mentioned at the beginning. And this time you don't have to do anything else, the food for infusoria is already included into the mix. And this method is the fastest one you can have an infusoria within 24 hours. So in each of those cases, we are waiting for the water to become a little bit cloudy or even possible green. This way you know that it infusoria is there, it multiplied enough to be eaten by fish. So you can use a turkey baster or small pipette, just take a small amount of this water and that's it. Pour it on top of your fry and they're gonna love it. So as you can see, it's really not that complicated. You have three different options, just make your selection, use the one that works for you, and that's it. And as I mentioned, infusoria is absolutely the best option for very small fry or very young fry, like one day old. If your fry is older or born bigger, then your best option is baby brine shrimp. 
I don't think that we need to introduce baby brine shrimp. This is the absolute best food for young fish. I think that the only reason not to use it is if your fry is simply too small to eat it. But if this is not the case, let's make some baby brine shrimp. To do that, you're gonna need some Artemia eggs and salt. And this is not your kitchen salt, it's a special salt for raising baby brine shrimp. But all of those products are very easy to buy online or in your local fish shop. I'm also using uh, Artemia hatchery from Hobby because this is crazy easy to use. Basically all I have to do is mix the salt with water, put it inside the hatchery and place some eggs in the outside ring. And that's it! No special light source, no air pump, no noise, no electricity, nothing. Just wait 36 hours and here we are. Live food for your fish. So this is basically what I use for my fish. It keeps them really healthy and the growth is crazy fast. So I strongly encourage you, if you only have a chance, use live foods for your fry. But if you don't, you still have some options. Of course, you can use artificial flakes. That's okay, it's not a crime. The one that I also use and can recommend is this one, Hikari First Bites. I'm using this just to increase the variety of diet for my fish. This is basically like a flake food, but it's very, very tiny. With this kind of stuff, what I like to do is spot feeding. That means I'm creating some kind of a mixture of that food with water, and then I'm using very small pipette, and then only put this mixture very close to the fry. If you don't have this food, you can use some replacements. First of all, you can always crush your regular flakes, but try to be accurate. Don't just break them, but really try to make almost like a powder. And your final option would be egg yolk. Just boil the egg, take a little piece of this yolk and mix it with water. And exactly like last time, try to spot feed your fish, otherwise you're gonna spoil the water. So just to summarize, to keep my fry happy and healthy, I always try to use live food. When they are very tiny, I use infusoria, there are three methods for this. If they are getting a little bit bigger and they are able to eat baby brine shrimp, this is what I give them. When they are getting a little bit older, I also introduce artificial foods. If you have any other suggestions for easy live food, please leave a comment, I always appreciate them. Please hit the like button if you like the video, I really appreciate it. But for now, thank you very much for watching and as always, see you in the next one.